Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'll be teaching you how you can make your own face recognized attendance uh, system. So before we get into the code, I'd like you to uh, see the demo of exactly what we're about to do. So the next clip that you will be seeing is the demo. So as you can see, I first run the generate dataset.py file and I entered my ID as one and you can see that the webcam opens and it captures my face. Okay, so this uh, is taking images as the data set because uh, we need to train our model to identify faces, right? So that's what generate data set does. Next up, I go to train dataset.py. I run the program and in this program, uh, uh, we have used a classifier and a recognizer which will uh, uh, train our data set okay next up if I go to recognize.py and run the program now you will see that a window pops up and uh, it can identify my face and recognize as per the model trained and now if I go to my destination folder and you can see here that I've generated all the data sets 50 images of my face then I go to attendance files and open Excel as this is our database that we're using you can see that my name is there and on present it is yes okay so that's how this works all right now since you've seen the demo let's get uh, straight into the code so first of all uh, what I'm done here is I've got uh, three different uh, Python files and I'll go through the code one by one and in chronological order all right so first of all uh, this the like this project that we're making is uh, is based on a custom data set right so you need to train your uh, model your recognizer model uh, by feeding your input images so for that you need to generate your images right of the faces that you want to train your model on so first of all we're going to generate our data set and for that we are using the generate dataset.py file so first of all i import my cv to an os os is basically used for the uh, accessing the operating system functions so next up i define a path called uh, defi uh, define a sure path exist and it takes in a function called path so basically what this does is if uh, we, we create a directly uh, in using the os dot path dot directory directory name right and if this does not exist then you make a new directory right so basically the path that we are providing uh, uh, we create a directory and if no such path exists we create a new directory right so that's what this uh, does next up we are do uh, doing the face id like this is just a simple uh, user input and then we use our uh, open cv skills by cv2 dot video capture that captures your webcam feed because we have passed the input as zero now for the face detector i have used the har cascade and you can go to the uh, you can just google har cascade and download the file i have downloaded it and saved it and uh, this location this uh, directory and i have initialized the count to zero count is basically the number of uh, images that we are going to have so for this particular project i will be using 50 you can alter and mess around with the numbers and see how what different results you get now next up we use this function a sure path exists and we pass uh, our path okay so this is the uh, my path and you just uh, when you're making your own project you just add the different path that you have and so next is while this is true uh, we use the cap dot read and i'm using the variable called image underscore frame all right so next up i'm going to be uh, converting my Im image underscore frame that is my uh, this snapshot uh, uh, from uh, color to like from bgr to gray grayscale okay so that's and i initialize that by the variable gray next up i did uh, use the face underscore detector dot detect multiscale function and to uh, count uh, like in our gray image count uh, like identify the faces that's what it does and stores it in the faces now for x y w h which are just the coordinates of the four corners in our faces we make a rectangle around our face so you use the cv2 rectangle function you pass your uh, snapshot that is your image dot frame and your coordinates and this 255 00 just uh, 
basically uh, defines the color okay so and the last parameter is your thickness and we increase the count by one because we've got one more uh, face captured now we save the captured image into our data set folder so we use the cv2.im right and this is my path and this is just uh, the format which i want to save i'm going to be using 1.1 1.2 up till 1.50 where the first number that is one is my id number okay that we have used here face id equal to input your input enter your id so say i've got four students so the you'll be having 200 images right so 1.1 1.2 up to 1.50 2.1 2.2 up to 2.50 similarly 4.1 4.2 up to 4.50 and so on if you have more students in your uh, class or employees okay now so next up uh, when we have saved the captured image into our data sets folder I am going to be showing the frame of I am going to be showing the frame so use the cv2 dot I am show and next up we just see we use an if statement called cv2 dot wait key 100 this is the unit of time or if we press q this basically translates to if the user presses q we break uh, our uh, code right or if the count is greater than 50 we print the message successfully captured and we break out okay next up we release and destroy all windows this last two lines is a good procedure to follow when doing uh, stuff related to OpenCV. okay so that's it for a generate data set folder uh, next up we have our train dot data set so first of all we import all our libraries so os and cv2 then we import numpy and from pil which is basically if i'm not wrong uh, pil is uh, I don't remember the full form now, but it's an important library. We import the image uh, uh, library. Okay. Now the next, this variable recognizer is we initialize with the cv2 dot face lbph face recognizer dot underscore create. So what this does is it creates a recognizer which has five parameters, namely radius, neighbors, grid x, grid y, and threshold. Okay. So this is all the internal mechanisms of this function. You can uh, read the documentation. I, I read it. That's why I know what it does. So if you have any doubts, just Google this function name. You can read the documentation and you'll be good to go. Next up, we'll be using our classifier. That is our har cascade. And we, we're going to be uh, giving the variable name detector. Now we define a function called define get images and labels from our path. So since uh, in our first step we generated uh, 50 images on our data set so for the training purpose we need to have the image and labels corresponding to each uh, photo right so that's we're going to write a custom function uh, uh, that takes in the path as your input and returns uh, your face samples and your ids so what this does is first of all we have image path equal to os dot path join path dot join and the input uh, the parameter that you've passed comma f for f in os dot list directory uh, uh, with the parameter path so what this does is os dot path dot join joins paths that are separated by a uh, forward slash or basically one hierarchy and we use this function to join paths of all our images in our data set using the os dot list directory so you might be wondering how did i know to how to use this I did not know. I just googled uh, how do you do this and after uh, some hours of researching and exploring some github repos, I got to know you can do this. Okay. So that's all it takes. You just have to open Google research and you'll be good to go. Next up, we initialize an empty array of face samples and IDs. Okay. That uh, will store all our IDs and face samples. So next up, we in, uh, start our for loop. So for image paths in image paths pil image equal to image dot open and you pa pass your image path dot convert and you give in quotes l so what this does is uh, so before i get to that path uh, os dot list directory uh, this method in python is used to get the list of all the files and directories in the specified directory okay now we need to uh, convert our images right we in our previous uh, file that is generate dot data set we use the cv2 dot convert color next up this 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 particular line pil image equal to image dot open 
and in parameters that is image path dot convert and in quotes l what this does basically is it color convert uh, we, we use the color conversions and this is done using the convert method now to read an image and uh, and convert it to grayscale we pass the parameter l there are different parameters passed for different uh, for operations uh, since we needed a grayscale we passed l okay now we are converting our pil image into a numpy array that's why we are going to be using numpy.array and pil image and this is uh, unsigned integer 8 okay that's our uh, process for converting our pil image into a numpy array now this line line number 15 that is id equal to int and this long uh, line of code basically what it does it it converts uh, so basically we are getting this line of code basically gets our id from our uh, image right and we, we use a split function and get the first uh, parameter of, uh, for first uh, like a value from the, the set okay next up we extract the faces for from the training image sample so faces equal to detector dot detect multi scale and you use the image dot numpy array uh, all images are treated as arrays when we do uh, operations on them so that's why we need to convert it to an array first so next up is for x y w h which is basically all the coordinates in faces you use the face samples that append you add a keep appending and you then image dot image np and your coordinates y to y plus h and x to x plus w and you append the id as well and lastly you return all the all the both the arrays of face samples and ids okay so that's our function done and in our main code right now we do faces comma ids equal to get images and labels and you pass your path that you have stored so this path this particular path stores all my uh, data set images 50 images and what this function does as we've just gone through it is it returns to all the face samples and the ids and next up we're going to be using s, e s equal to recognize the train it uh, uses all my faces and numpy dot array ids and we just print the message successfully trained and we write this in a, a file called trainer.yml which I've stored on my desktop and we use the recognizer.write okay so once trained we need to test our model so for that you need to place your say face in front of the camera and then it needs to recognize right so we import all the libraries uh, we're not necessarily going to be using all of them but just for completeness I imported pretty much everything so I'll start from line Code line number nine so cascade classifier c a s c l f is cv to dot cla cascade classifier this is again my hard cascade frontal face default and i'm using that uh, throughout next up we use a cv to dot video capture that is just basically capturing feed from our webcam recognizer is our same lbph face recognizer underscore create and recognizer dot read and uh, so basically this uh, reads from our trainer file and we initialize a few variables called flag id and file name and we initialize a dictionary of item one and one now we define a font that we're going to be using and next up our main uh, part of our code starts so while true return comma image is cap dot read and gray we again convert it to gray from bgr to gray next up we use the faces is cascade classifier dot detect multi scale gray and these parameters i don't recall but you can just find it out by typing them what it does it's i think it should be thickness i guess and next up is for x y w h and faces roi gray is basically your region of interest gray and you def you basically crop your gray gray area to only get your region of interest okay so that's what this does next up we put a rectangle around that around our image and next this this thing is very interesting so we have id comma conf so basically conf is uh, used as an acronym for confidence as a short form basically so what this does is this function recognizer.predict gives an output called conf which is confidence so if the confidence is higher then it means that the pictures are less similar or in other words the lower the better so the lower the confidence the better is the match that you have from your trained images and your real life testing okay and this is uh, the id is another parameter that it use now i've set the like limit as if confidence is less than 85 you can mess around with this number and see what works best for you 
next step I've just uh, import uh, like added some sample names for my database that we're we're going to be using Excel so I've just used my friends names uh, Hitarth and Shiva and I've defined three IDs ID 1 2 and 3 and I've just wrote down some code to this basically Excel write is write our uh, name and if it is present then yes in our Excel file okay and this is just the format that we have to follow now if you have to add if you want to add more IDs then similarly add blocks of else if uh, with uh, increasing ID numbers and ID uh, like names and you just copy paste this entire thing as it is okay and if it uh, if the confidence is like greater than 85 then it passes a message that unknown and we cannot recognize and flag is incremented and then we break now we put text on our image uh, when we open our webcam so that basically uh, we give the string id and string confidence so maybe if my face is recognized it will be saying harsh comma and some confidence number right and this is basically where we want to define it uh, where we want to write it and this is the coordinates the font uh, thickness color and the last parameter i don't know uh, that's it uh, okay that's line type i guess and then we just show the frame using cv dot i am show and if flag is greater equal to equal to 10 basically the flag is imp incremented when we cannot recognize if we cannot recognize for 10 times your transaction has been blocked and your uh, face has not been recognized and we break out and this is just some time dot time function if you want to play some sound or something I, as I mentioned we might not necessarily use it every time but just for completeness sake I've done it okay you can yeah, remove it if you want you can just maybe remove this it's not necessary really and this is again the same thing that we've done if basically your weight key is 100 or if the user presses Q you break out so that's it with our uh, code so first of all you're going to be running generate dataset.py then after you use your train dataset and then you recognize .py now unfortunately i won't be able to show you the live demo right now because of light constraints uh, there is a particular thing that i've observed is that this particular model and uh, like uh, like program works very well in good light when you have light shining on your face and not so much well in uh, dim, dim conditions so right now i have pretty dim conditions around me so i won't be able to show you the live demo that's why at the starting you you've seen a demo that i pre-recorded uh, in light uh, like in pretty lit conditions so you you'll get an idea of how this works i'll soon be pushing the code into my github link so if you like the video make sure to give it a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel press the bell icon for uh, notifications every time i post and if you like this uh, code then make sure to star my uh, repo, repo on github and make sure to give their uh, give a follow there as well I'll, uh, I hope you like the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, uh, guys.